Okay, class, welcome to lecture eight. Today we're talking about probability distributions. Um, so it's very related to probability, but sort of like a different way to think about it and organize the information that we've already learned about. Okay, so here's, here's the idea. So given a probability experiment, just a fancy word, but, but you should think of things like um, flipping coins, stuff we've talked about, rolling dice, or like drawing cards, stuff like that, are examples of probability experiments. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to ask our questions a little bit differently. Instead of asking like, what's the probability of blank happening? We're going to ask questions um, so that the possible outcomes of our question are numbers. Then we're going to assign probabilities to those numbers. So this is the big picture idea. So probabilities to the numbers. OK, so let's see what. Sounds a bit weird at first, but let's go through and see what I'm talking about. Um, so what I'm talking about is something like this. When we flip two coins, right now, the question we can ask is sort of, what are the possible outcomes? So that's like the question. What are the possible outcomes? And the answer to that question is not a number. What are the possible outcomes? They are, um, I could flip a head, then another head. I could flip a head, then a tail. Sorry, I said one thing and wrote a different thing. A tail. I could flip a tail, then a head. Or I could flip tails and then tails. So those are the possible outcomes. None of these are numbers. Um, so that's what we want to fix, because numbers let us do more stuff. Um, so how can we, we fix this? We change what we're asking for. So we don't ask what are the possible outcomes. We have to ask something a little bit different so that numbers are the answers to that question. So a question like this is much better. What are possible instead of outcomes how about number of tails that I could get I could get from flipping two coins so all I've done is I've changed the question slightly so that the answer to this question are numbers so what are the possible number of tails that I could get when flipping two coins? So now the outcomes are numbers. I could get, well, I can just look up here. I could get zero tails. I could get one tail. Or I could get two tails. So my possible outcomes are zero, one, and two. Um, so it's just a different way of thinking about the same question by asking a different question. Okay, so let's do some more examples of this type of thinking. So I could ask for what's the number of heads from, I don't know, three coin flips. Well, same idea. I could get no heads, I could get one, I can get two, or I can get all three heads. Um, I could ask for Maybe this is a little bit trickier. Number of aces. If I draw five cards all at once. So what's the answer here? Well, because there are only four aces total in the deck, the most I could I could draw at the same time is four. So it's still it's not gonna go up to five just because I'm drawing five cards. Okay. Um to be something with dice, so like number of 
fours rolled in eight rolls of the dice. So then I could get no fours, I could get one, I could get two, and so on. Or maybe they could all be fours. So then I just use ellipses so I don't have to write all the numbers down. I do dot, dot, dot. Okay. Um, so this is the type of thing we're going to study today. But because we are studying stats, stats people like to overly complicate things by naming them things that are, sound confusing. So, so I have to do that too. So these, what do I mean by these? I'll say in a second. These are examples of something called a random variable. That name is not going to be so important for us. But what are examples of random variables? These things. So all of these things on the left here. Um, so what they really are, i.e. Um, numerical measures, if you want to be super official, of outcomes. Um, so then, what that means is a, is a random variable is something which can take values um, that are numbers. So that's what the things on the right are going to be. Okay. So this is just another way to think about a random variable. So a random variable can then take on um, a set of possible, some set of possible numbers. So that's what these numbers here are, are on the right. Um, so the random variable in this third example is the number of fours rolled in an eight in eight rolls of the dice, and it can take on some set of possible numbers, and this is that set of numbers here. So then the, this is another example with its set of numbers, and another example with its set of numbers. Um, try not to get too caught up, but we are going to have to use fancy math notation, which can get confusing. Okay. So let's do that next. In math notation, um, what we do is we use big or capital, whatever I want to say, big X, I'll make it really big, um, to indicate random variable, a random variable, and a little, little baby X um, to indicate possible values of big X of the random variable. Okay, I, drew, I made this little X too small, but it's <laughs> little X, okay. Um, so then what we could do is we could put sort of some information in like a chart format just to give you more examples. So, so here's the random variable with its corresponding possible values. So just reorganizing what we did earlier, the number of heads is an example in two flips. That's an example of a random variable. And it's possible values are 0, 1, and 2. So that's what little x could be. OK. Um, give me one more example. Number of queens uh, drawn in, I don't know, a nine card draw. So there's only four queens, so you can only go up to four. That's what little x can be. OK. Um, so then what we want to notice is we want to figure out how this relates to probability, because that's what we're talking about. Um, so notice next, each little, little x possibility has a chance of occurring. This is where probability comes in. So for example, if I flip, if I'm looking at this probability, or sorry, if I'm looking at this random variable, the number of heads and two flips, there's some chance that I get zero heads, there's some chance that I get one, and there's some other chance that I get two. So there's gonna be probability coming into this. And this goes for any probability, sorry, this goes for any random variable. 
So for any big X, this is what's going to happen. OK, so let's um, dive into that in more detail to see what I'm talking about. OK, so yeah, we'll just keep studying this one example. So, so big X, our random variable, is going to be the number of heads in two coin flips. And so little x can be 0, 1, or 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign probabilities to each little x. Um, but I'm not going to like randomly assign probabilities. It's just going to be the probability according to the actual probability. So according to the actual probability of that outcome. So, so what I mean is I want to assign using this fancy probability notation a probability to zero heads occurring. So this is saying that little x is zero, meaning zero heads into coin flips. So this is the outcome. And I want to say, what's the probability of that happening? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate happening um, that actual probability. So what's, what's it going to be? Well, we know how probabilities work, hopefully, by now. So it's got to be, let me drop this arrow better. It's got to be um, the number of ways to, act, to, to flip zero heads divided by the total number of ways to flip two coins. And there's four total coin flip possibilities. That's what we listed earlier. That's coming from the fact that I could do heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. Those are the four. Um, so how many of those give me zero heads? Well, just this one. So there's just one way to do that out of four. So that's where that one is coming from. OK, um, so that's the idea. So I've assigned zero to one fourth. Now I'm going to assign one because that's my other, my next possible outcome. So now this is the probability of flipping uh, one head. So what's that going to be? Well, there's still four possibilities, as you can see right here. It's the same four. So now there's only there's two ways to get um, just one head. So it's two fourths. Next, I'm going to assign a probability to the last possible outcome, which is getting uh, two tails. Oh, wait, sorry. Did I change the word from heads to tails earlier? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, probability of flipping two heads. Well, there's only one way to do that again out of four possibilities. This is the only way, two heads there. Right, um, so this big pile of information is called a probability distribution, but we're gonna organize it better in a second. So the idea behind the name you could think about it as like I'm distributing probabilities to outcomes. I'm saying that these are my three outcomes that could happen, zero, one, or two. And I'm distributing probabilities to each of them. I'm saying that zero happening is one fourth, one happening is two fourths, and two happening is one fourth. Okay, um, so this is called a probability distribution, but it's also an assignment the whole shebang, an assignment of probabilities to 
values to the little x's of a random variable. Okay, um, so we'll do another one and then we'll put it in a little chart format so it's easier to, to see that that's sort of like your final answer for these things. Okay, so let's see, let's do another random variable. So the number of tails in three coin flips. So now little x can be zero, one, two, or three tails. Um, and I have to assign probabilities to each of these outcomes. So I don't know yet, I'll put little question marks. We'll figure them out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna list all the outcomes. That'll help me do this faster. So, so let's see. Actually, I don't want to call them outcomes because the numbers are the outcomes now. So I'm just going to call them possibilities. So, for example, when I flip three coins, I could get um, heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, um, heads, tails, tails. And then there should be four more. So tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, uh, tails, heads, and then all tails. So there's eight things that could happen. So the probability of getting zero tails, well, there's eight possible things that could happen. How many ways are there to get zero tails? That's just this one, there's just one way. Just the one. Um, how many ways are there to get one tail? Well, let's see. There's these two. And this one makes three. And how many ways are there to get two tails? There's this one and these two to make three. And how many ways is there to make one, sorry, to make uh, three tails, just the one way. So it's very symmetric, one, three, three, one, might look familiar to you. If you remember something called the Pascal's triangle, um, but that's for another day. Okay, so then using this, we create the probability distribution in the form of a chart. probability distribution, which I'm gonna abbreviate constantly because it's too long to write, um, in the form of a chart. So what you do is you write little x on one side and the probability of that little x happening on the right. So we're just reorganizing the information. So little x, how many tails could I get from three flips? Could be zero, one, two, or three. And now we just write down these probabilities that we figured out earlier. So one eighth, three eighths, three eighths, and one eighth. Um, and so each little x is next to the probability that it happens. That's the key. You can't just put them in random different orders or something. Okay. Um, but then one little fun fact you should notice is that these add up to one. So you should think about why that happens. Maybe I'll talk about it another time. Okay, um, so now we're gonna shift back towards data. So we talked about data at the beginning of the class and then we talked about probability. Now we're gonna sort of mix them together a bit. Um, so what we can do is we can make a probability distribution for data instead of for a, a probability experiment. So it's a bit weird, but it's going to be very intuitive. So let's see. 
So first I'll just have a bunch of data. Um, okay, so let me pause to make, actually, it's not that much, I'll just write it. Okay, so two, four, six, six, four, two, oh, sorry, there's another four. Two, three, five, and five. So we wanna make a probability distribution out of this data, meaning in, at the very end, I need something like this, a little chart with numbers and numbers. So what's it gonna look like? Um, what is the natural, very fancy math word, the natural way to make a probability distribution out of just this random data that I just created? Well, I need stuff on this left side and I need stuff on this right side. So first I'll think about what should my little x's be? Well, very logical choice is just to look at the data and say, well, there's a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. So I can think about as I can think about it as my little x could be any one of those. And that's what I'm gonna do. So each data possibility is the answer to this first question. Um, so little x could be two, three, four five or six, I'm not gonna bother putting in numbers that are not even in here, like 10, because what's the probability of then of X being little, of being 10? Well, it's not even in here. So I'm just gonna only use the numbers that are in there. So then we need a good way to assign probabilities to these X's. Um, so for example, what should this be? Well, we're gonna look to how we understand probability. So right now we know that the probability should always be the number of ways the outcome can happen over the number of possibilities. So that's just our idea of probability. So then what's a logical choice for this thing? Well, how about the number of ways being the number of twos in the data? Because I could think about it as sort of a little probability experiment where if I just like pick one of these guys at random, what are the chances of getting a two? Well, that would be how many twos there are, if it was like a big bag of numbers, divided by how many numbers are in the bag. So that's what we're gonna use. Number of twos in the, in the data versus the number of data points. Um, this seems like a very logical choice to, be, to use. So in that situation, it would be, well, how many twos are there? Let's see. One, oh, there's just two, okay. So it'd be two, not because this is a two, but because there are two twos in the data, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do all of these. So then, This is two out of 10. So how many threes are there is gonna tell us the next one. How many fours, how many fives, and how many sixes will tell us each of these. So let's tally it up. Okay, where is this? Thing? All right, so there was, there's just the one three. There are how many fours? One, two, three fours. Oops, not three out of four, three fours out of 10 data points. There are one, two, two fives, 
And I bet I could figure out how many how many tens of, how many how many sixes there are just by counting the leftovers. Five, six, seven. There must be three sixes. Let's see. Let's just make sure though. Oh wait, what? I miscounted one, two. Ah, I don't know how to add. Okay. Whoops. All right. That's okay. Nobody saw that. Let's make sure this adds up. Uh, three plus three plus four. Yeah, that's 10. Okay, good. So it should be 10 out of 10. So then in chart form, the probability distribution for this data is this. Okay, so that's the natural way to make a probability distribution out of data. But then we could do something super interesting um, using just this. We can, I'm gonna use a very fancy math terminology, we can recover the mean of the data. That just means I'm gonna figure out the mean of the data in a different way using this instead of the actual method that we learned. Um, so first we can try to remember how the mean works to make sure that this works. So the mean, remember I'm gonna add up all the data. So you can check this on your own if you want, but this is what you, you should get if you've done it right. Or assuming I have not done it wrong. Add up all the numbers, divide by 10, you should get 4.1. Uh, and I'm going to get 4.1 a different way. That's what it means to recover the mean by using this probability distribution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each at little x times its probability, then add them. So I'm going to do 2 times 2 tenths. I'm going to do three times one tenth, and so on, like that. Four times three tenths, five times two tenths, and six times two tenths. So there was two of those. Yes. Okay, good. So I'm going to do all that and then add them up. Um, so if I do that, let's see, I'll do it the long way here, but. Can use the calculator. So you get four tenths plus three tenths plus twelve tenths plus ten tenths plus twelve tenths. If you do all those multiplications, that'll add up to four point one. So then that means that the mean can be found using this method. And this will always work. Um, you can sort of reason to yourself why this will always work. It's really doing the same thing as the mean. If you sort of zoom out here and you look at these two processes and you know how fractions work, then you can sort of see why they're the same answer. But I'll leave that to you to convince yourself why it'll always work. Uh, you can always email me if you, if you want me to give you a convincing argument. But instead, I'm going to show you something else that's cool. Okay, um, which is, what if we do this? For a probability distribution that doesn't even come from data. Because data, we know how to calculate a mean for, and then we see that this is always the same as the mean, but, if I do something like um, the number of heads into coin flips, that's not data. So it doesn't have a mean, but I could still do this process and see what happens. So let's do that. So I could get zero, one, or two heads. Um, and we already should know that this is the answer to this probability distribution. 
from before. We figured this out. Now I'm just putting it in a chart form because there's one way to get zero heads, two ways to get one head, and one way to get two heads. So then do that same process. Zero times one fourth, one times two fourths, and two times one fourth, and then add them up. So I'm going to get um, zero plus two fourths plus two fourths equals one. Um, but there was no data, so it's not the mean. So what does this one represent? If it's not the mean because there's no data, what is it? Um, it's called something else. It's called expected value. And um, the idea is it's because it's the value that you expect to get on average if you perform this experiment a bunch of times. So if I flip two coins a whole bunch of times and I constantly record how many heads come up, the idea is that on average, I should expect one head to come up. Um, but if I, I have to do this a whole bunch of times for that to, to be the average. Um, but okay, we're gonna talk about that in the next video. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay, see you next time.